Garen Scribner is starring as Jerry Mulligan in the national tour of An American in Paris. We're here at the historic Brill Building in the heart of Times Square to talk with the star. Garen Scribner, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon to talk about the tour of An American in Paris. You're playing Jerry Mulligan on tour. Uh, you've been involved with this production for a while mm -hmm. now. You've done it in Paris. You've done it on Broadway. Are you still having the time of your life with this show? I am, I am. And thanks, Ryan, for having me today. You know, it's such a beautiful show, and having done the show since the beginning, I feel so honored to be continuing with this great group of people and mm -hmm. this amazing group of producers and with Chris Wielden, who's back in the studio with us, and we're, we're working on the material again, and it's a fabulous group of people and, and a great show, so. Right, no, I mean, it's been a big part of your life for a while now. Are you... What do you love most about playing Jerry Mulligan? I mean, he, he's this former GI after World War II. He becomes, he pursues his artistic passions. I mean, you must be able to relate to that a little bit. What do you, what do you love playing about, about playing this guy? I love Jerry because I see so much of myself in him, for sure. Uh, so I have a lot to relate to, you know, as, as a person who's pursued an artistic career since, you know, I, I left high school. You know, that is what's really important to me is to share my passion and to share my art and to inspire other people. So, you know, Jerry's very optimistic and, and mm -hmm. open-minded and, um, and curious about the world, and he's got a great outlook on life. And so I, I like to think of, of myself that way too. So right. definitely that's easy. I have a lot to relate to with him. But you know, it's such a, an amazing role. You know, I get to dance my butt off. I get to sing, I get to act with such a great group of people, it's it's the opportunity of a lifetime, so I'm thrilled. It's no surprise that American in Paris is going on on tour. It was a huge hit on Broadway, four Tony Awards. How much attention has gone into sort of making sure that the production that was on Broadway is the same production that is now touring across the country? It's the same production. It's, it's the exact same thing you'll get on Broadway. It's the same scenery, it's the same costumes. Um, same lighting, same director. Sarah and I both came from directly from the Broadway cast. Sarah Esty. Sarah Esty, exactly. The gorgeous Sarah Esty. You know, we didn't we didn't change anything in terms of that. You're still going to see the same giant sweeping Broadway musical um, in any city that we come to. So right. we're bringing Paris across America. It's wonderful. Well put. <laughs> in your uh, Broadway.com fresh face, which if you haven't watched, check that out. We're hitching ourselves the Garen Scribner wagon here. <laughs> um, you sort of mentioned that the performing bug sort of bit you at seven. Um, so it's been nonstop for you for a really long time. Is it, How do you... How do you sort of maintain that energy and just sort of, you know, you were with the San Francisco Ballet for 10 years and then moved here to pursue musical theater. How have you, you know, what sort of keeps driving you to pursue all of that? You know, I, I take it day by day, but um, ballet was my first passion, you know, as a kid and other types of, of dance, jazz and tap and uh, hip hop and whatever I could really get myself into class wise. And so the technique of dance, the, the practice and the rigor of mm -hmm. taking class every day and moving every day, is really what has driven me in the past. So the cool thing is that I'm still able to do that. It's like anything, it's like yoga or any practice, whether you're a singer or an artist or an athlete, which mm -hmm. we are all of those things. Right. Um, it's about doing it every day, it's about the practice. And so I wake up every day and think, okay, how am I gonna use my instrument today? And the cool mm -hmm. thing about this show is I get to use so many different elements yeah. every day. And if I'm tired or if I feel like a little bit under that day, all it takes is for me to look out into the audience and see one person who's really, truly living for it. And it's so easy to be inspired right away and think, this is for them. They've never seen this before. And then I get through the next three hours, no problem. Right. You, you had been dancing for all, for all those years, but sort of musical theater, was, were you, had you done any acting or sort of singing at that point? Or were you nervous to take those things on when you got started? I was for sure nervous. I think any <laughs> anybody in their right mind would be nervous to do something so so new and different, mm -hmm. and to take on the responsibility of doing a leading role in a show like this. Right. Um, you know, we have seventy one people with us in this show, with the crew and with the cast, and we have ten swings in the show. It's it's a huge yeah, production. a big group. Um, so to know that you have such an amazing group behind you, and that it's really a team effort, but also that you know people are really watching you and needing you to carry the performance is mm -hmm. is a huge a huge uh, undertaking. So I remember when I first did it thinking, wow, this is a really big deal. And, mm -hmm. it's, and it's scary for sure. Um, but it's also in its, in its challenge and in its vulnerabil vulnerability, um, that's where its reward is too. You know? So overcoming that fear and, and facing it is, is what makes it feel good in the end. I feel like An American in Paris is the perfect example of sort of a sweeping romance. Do you find yourself to be a hopeless romantic? Is it, is it something that really speaks to you on that level? Yeah, 
Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? What's your favorite moment in the show that, for you, that kind of encapsulates what it's all about and the romance that it's sort of speaking to? Um, well, in our show, there's it's so seamless the transitions between dance numbers and traditional book scenes mm -hmm. and songs. So um, it's sort of hard to pick one moment, but um, I definitely love the moments where. I don't, I'm not thinking I'm about to dance, I'm about to sing, or I'm about to act, when it all becomes one, which mm -hmm. is sort of the whole thing. So right. it's, it's really hard to pick a moment. And that changes every day because you know we're humans and every day our lives are different when we wake up. It's a mm -hmm. whole new day. So I'm experiencing something different before I walk into that theater and when I leave the theater. And those experiences can't help but go into my performance. So it really changes day to day. Right. What yeah. do you like to do when you're not dancing? When you're not, you know, in Jerry's skin? What do you What do you like to do as Garen? Oh, as Garen. <laughs> well, um, I'm a huge dog person, so I love my dog Pilot. Right. Um, who's right. going to be on the road with me for the first portion of it? Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. So Pilot's going along for the ride. He's coming. <laughs> He'll come back to New York as well and, and stay with some friends and my brother. Um, and the cities where I can't really have him. Mm -hmm. But he'll be out there with me, so I love to walk my dog and take him to the park. And um, I like to do yoga as well, if I can fit it in, if I can find good teachers on the road. Mm -hmm. um, I can also just do it myself in the hotel room. But, um, you know, this role takes a lot out of me. So yeah. I think when I'm on that stage, I'll be with, you know, friends from the cast or friends that I know in that city. Um, or sleeping, preparing <laughs> for the next show. Oh yeah, that's right. Make sure to pencil in some yeah, sleeping. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was gonna. Yeah, you say that it takes a lot out of you, you, but you've you're someone who's been involved in this profession for a long time now. Is this the most challenging thing that you've ever done? I would say yes, because it, it is it is probably the hardest role that I've ever done from start to finish mm -hmm. as, a, as a performance piece. Um, but because it has also challenged me so much as a person, you know, right. to be able to face my fears in terms of um, of singing and acting and dancing all at once, and you know, I changed my whole life to come to New York and do this. Yeah. So I wasn't just trying a new thing. I was also in a brand new city and w around a different group of people. And yeah. you know, fortunately, I was closer to my family. My parents live in D.C. and in Florida, and my brother lives here in New York. So that was great. So it was so many pros and cons. Mm -hmm. um, and any actor can tell you that they really you have to be broken down before you can really you know access right. the things that are that are kind of find that emotional depth. Yeah, for to, sure, you have right. to reach, um, and that can be tough. Besides the sort of physical things that you've learned about yourself and what your body can do, are there things about you personally that you've learned through this experience? For sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. I couldn't tell you exactly what they are, but I know <laughs> that lots of things have come up, and I've been able to process them differently. Um, and access different emotions while I'm on stage, which is obviously very cathartic, mm -hmm. but also can be tough. So, and because you're doing a show eight times a week, it, it gets to you. You know, right, when you do right. anything that much, it becomes challenging, um, and you have to find ways to kind of remove yourself from the equation and put yourself back in and make sure that you have enough rest and you know really take care of yourself because it's a lot of repetition. And a lot of young people love to watch these sort of one-on-one -on -one interviews and get to know the people they love seeing on stage. And a lot of them are also pursuing artistic careers. Is there a particular piece of advice that you were given that really resonated with you? Or is there a lesson you've now learned yourself along the way that you feel you could bestow upon? Sure. I think one of the most important things is, and this sounds so trite because everybody says it, but to not listen to what anybody says to you about, about who you are as a performer, or who you are as a person, and what you should be to be successful. I think the most successful and interesting people, the ones who tell the really compelling stories, are the ones who say, this is exactly how I'm going to do it because this is how I feel, mm -hmm. and really don't listen to the noise. You know, they block everything out and say, this is exactly what I'm doing. And to not be afraid to try new things and to fail at them and realize, well, oh, that didn't work, let me try it this way. I think the, the best performers, the ones who are really honest and true to themselves, are the ones who, who really listen inward and don't try and say, I want a career like that person, or I want to do that role like that person did. Mm -hmm. It's never going to work. You have to find what's right with you. Right. Well, well, thank you, Garen, so oh, much you, for Ryan. coming and doing this one-on-one -on -one with us. My pleasure. And make sure you check out An American in Paris on the road. Check out Broadway.com for information about the show. And check out BroadwayAcrossAmerica.com to find out when it's playing in a city near you. Thanks again so much. You got it. Thanks, Ryan.